One of the things that you're going to do during for the lab portion of this class is you're going to do what we call a lab write-up or a formal lab report. Um, so what I want to do is go through the parts of that and so you have an idea of what's going to be expected of you. You're going to do two of these um, throughout the semester. So the first one I think is the second week and then or third week and then the next one is uh, later on in the semester once you've gotten feedback on the first one. So what does a lab write-up include? It includes the title, the introduction, the methods, the results, and the discussion, as well as the references. And I'll show you that in a second. So your title for your, and I'm going to show you an example of this, but your title should be short, concise, and but it should tell the reader exactly what this experiment was. Um, the introduction then is going to define the subject, introdu introduce the subject, outline the scientific purpose. Uh, you're probably going to use one of your references, one or two of your references. So what's been done in the past? Why did you, why did we do this study? What kind of what question were we answering? What knowledge already exists about this subject? And then you're again going to go into the literature and look at the history of the issue and how this question was developed. So again, here's just some other things that can go in the introduction. What is the specific, excuse me, what is the specific purpose of the study? Um, specific hypotheses, which we'll talk about the educated guess. What do you think is going to happen on this? So there's a bunch of stuff that you can include in the introduction. The second section is the materials and the methods. This is exactly what you did to complete this experiment. Most people don't put enough detail in this. Basically what this should be able to do is that if you run this experiment, you should be able to hand it to somebody else or somebody else should be able to read it and they should be able to complete the study exactly as you did it. So again, the biggest weakness when people write this section is they don't put enough detail in. So can a person replicate your study exactly when they read the materials in the method section? The results for you guys is mostly going to be using graphs, but basically this is the numbers you got from the from the experiment. So you ran the experiment. What are the numbers you got? Many times you will report those numbers in graph form, but these are just numbers. These are not. This is not why you think you got the results. This is just pure numbers, pure data. Again, mostly in a graph, but sometimes you might just record the numbers. Now the discussion is your interpretation of the data. Why do you think you got the data you did? You do not want to just repeat what you put in the results. So if you've got numbers in here and your discussion is just saying, well, for this, we got this number, and for this number of species, or this area, we got this number, that's not what we're looking for. The results has the number, or they have the numbers. Here, you're discussing why. So pick out the most interesting parts of the data or the results and explain why you think you got the numbers you did. You also might want to use a reference here comparing it to other studies that have been done. But again the discussion is the why of the results. Do not repeat the results. Okay. The works cited or reference section is just going to be what references did you use and if you noticed in the lab information folder there was a, uh, a document you could click on which would link you to sites that will help you do that. So what I did, just to give you an example, is I wrote a fake lab write-up based on the Gorongosa lab that you did. So if you remember from your reading, and you may not have looked at it yet, but when you look at it, they were trying to compare the number of species that existed before a war the Civil War in Mozambique and after the war. So I wrote an introduction based on that. You'll notice, and I made this reference up, I used a reference. Okay, so you want to read this and get an idea of what an introduction looks like. Here are the methods. This is exactly what we did. Again, I made this up, but this is exactly how the study would have been completed. Note the detail. There's lots of detail in there. The results are going to be in a graph in this case and in, in both cases for you guys it probably will be also notice what I did is I made the graph on graph paper which we supply you you can download and then you either have to scan it in or take a picture of it and then include it insert it into your 
uh, lab write-up. So here you've got a graph, it's a bar graph. Uh, we go through the different types of graphs, but this basically puts the results into a form that are very easy to read. So you, instead of putting a bunch of numbers that might not make any sense, here it's very easy for us to see the comparison of the number of species in each area of Gorongosa before the war and after the war. Then the discussion. Notice I'm not repeating the numbers from the results. What I am doing is I am discussing why we think he got the we got the results that we did. So yes, I may mention that one area had this number of species, but then I explain why. So you do not just want to reiterate or restate the results. You are talking about why. And again, you may use another reference in this section to explain the why. Right. Here I spelled reference wrong, which I just noticed. But then I do the. You can either call this the work cited or the reference page. Here is the reference that I used within the text. So notice that I reference it in the text. I cite it in the text right here, and then in the reference or work cited section, I then put it so that anyone can go find it to look up where you got your information. So that's the basics of doing a lab write-up. And again, you'll be doing two of those during the semester. All right, let's move on.